Sorry about that. He fell asleep! So, what do you want from me now? Nothing! Is that you, Ace? I'm with the white beer pirates. Every bit of this is my own damn fault! Don't try this at home, guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, <laughs> didn't hear you there. So hot in here. You know, maybe I should close the door really quick because here goes. A diehard One Piece fan trying to tell you why he wants to be part of the live action series. Hey, my name is Amin Bamet and I'm a professional actor. Who, from the bottom of his heart, wants to play Porcus the Ace for the One Piece Netflix live adaptation. Huh, sweet. You know how many people want to do this? You do know that there have been other actors who wanted to play Ace and had their hair grown up way before you. I know. Shut the fuck up. But hear me out. Like I really, really want to do this. So this is going to be a rather long video, but that is only because I want to show you my commitment and show you that I got what it takes. Like for real, for real. And honestly, it might seem a little bit try hard, but that's what they do. They try. Hard! Now, before I tell you how many things, I mean there are like plenty of things you wouldn't even come to think of. Make me a super duper mega good fit for Ace. Let me just explain to you how committed I was in really creating these four audition tapes. Link in the description after this video. First of all, I voice acted and recorded all the roles you can hear in these casting tapes. From Luffy, because I'm gonna be king of the pirates, to Smoker, now move it, to the villagers, let's go, oh yeah baby, and even Whitebeard. I'm your captain and I told you to go, my son. I also wrote the scripts, dialogues, and stage production all by myself. And in order to be able to construct these scenes, and of course because of role research purposes, I reread every One Piece volume that Ace appears in. That of course including also the spin-offs. Look, I know that this is practically canon, but Oda-sama didn't write it, you know what I mean? Plus, I of course rewatched every episode of the anime with Ace in it. In fact, I actually created and uploaded a fan summary of all the Ace scenes from the anime, <laughs> which somehow got viral on YouTube, and watched literally every explanation, analysis, life of theory, even hell, what if scenario of Porcus the Ace I could find on YouTube. Well, not like I hadn't always been watching One Piece tubers before since I'm a diehard One Piece fan. You know what's actually funny is that on the very exact day I was gonna record my audition tape for Porcus the Ace, like two days ago, one of my favorite One Piece tubers uploaded her character analysis of Porcus the Ace. Oh, you know, because of that. Like out of nowhere. I mean, really, like at this time, there is no reason whatsoever to be posting this video right now. Now call me insane, but I must say, this can't be a coincidence. And lastly, I didn't save any time, money, or effort trying to make this costume look as dope as even humanly possible. So I of course ordered the hat, the necklace, that one I actually made myself, the lock port, the ace belt, the dagger was actually custom 3D printed for me, which was cheap at all, and the backpack. Grew my hair out, and like a real honorable cosplayer, have my elbow pad as well as the pants with the signature side bag tailored for myself. All right, I know. As a true cosplayer, I should have tailored that myself. Can't be good at everything, okay? But yeah, that's how I went about these scenes. Altogether, I made four scenes, including Ace's introduction at the bar of Arabasta, the fight with Smoker, the arm wrestling scene with Luffy, and then also the Whitebeard Pirates arrival at Marineford. Now, I did change a few things here and there about the scenes and melted some parts together, but because it is my own audition tape anyway, I might as well. For example, I made myself defeat Smoker with a fire fist. FIRE FIST! <laughs> Well, this was a waste of money because um, I just really wanted to throw a fire fist. But yeah, you can watch all these alterations in my actual audition video, which again, I'll link in the description. Okay, let's just quickly go over my skills for action flips in particular, because originally I just wanted to talk about my personal similarities to Ace. As for athletics, I am experienced in the martial arts. I got a black belt in Taekwondo. So I kind of do know how to kick a leg or two. And then I'm also trained in boxing, as you can see here. Don't you 
mess with me or One Piece. And then I also learned some Krav Maga, which is basically like military self-defense, so... I do know how to handle a weapon and how to defend against it. Now don't be fooled. I am aware of the fact that Ace is a Logia user, so he's not really involved in any close combat, except against Blackbeard, maybe. No problem, I got you covered. Because I'm also a professional dancer of two dance styles, I do know how to move smoothly through space. Smoothly through space. Man, even a native speaker wouldn't know how to pronounce that. For one thing, I'm a contemporary dancer. <laughs> contemporary dance Le Mans Technique at York University in Toronto, Canada and have been working as a choreographer and artist in multiple ensembles and theatre pieces. My other dance style, which is actually my main horse, is breaking. And it's actually funny because in breaking you're trying to create your own movement that is expressive of yourself and to me it's actually very similar to signature attacks in anime for example if luffy got his gum gum fist i for example get like my own air chain kind of footwork when it comes to stunts i actually also practice a little bit of parkour and tricking i think it's time to blow this thing get everybody in the stuff together okay three two one which means that i can do flips and jump off of things without breaking my neck let's jam <laughs> And then, uh, I don't know if this really matters, but I also work as a model. Which did teach me how to move naturally in front of the camera. And I think that's actually quite helpful for portraying the way that Ace carries himself. And I mean, while we're at it, I might as well add that I've been modeling for the GCD Swamp Piece collab. Meat and potatoes. Ace is already me, or I am already Ace. Let me elaborate. What I'm trying to say here is that there really are quite a few parallels between Ace and my personal life and upbringing. Number one, Bataria, so the village where Ace was born, and Dawn Island. Here goes some background information. I'm half Algerian. Oh yeah, Algeria is this giant country in North Africa that nobody knows about. It's actually the biggest country in all of Africa. That is due to the fact that they own the biggest part of the Sahara Desert. Dropping geography knowledge. And I partly grew up in that Algerian fishers village, which is called Zombar. The village has been named by a pirate, a French pirate. Why? Because we've been the biggest and longest lasting French colony. Geography! Geography! And yeah, it's the same name as John Barr from The Law Pirates. Yeah, I mean John Barr like this John Barr, who's actually named by that pirate as well. And if that isn't the most in your face real life link to One Piece, I don't know what is. But yeah, John Barr is like a fisher's, fisher's village, you know? Like it's all about boats, fishing, and the seas. Yeah. And that's why all our lives, me and my little brother, who I'll get to in a second, have always been around seamanship. And that's why it's been very easy for us to identify with the world of One Piece, like a surrounding that we knew already, that's familiar. See that 10 year old me at the top of the boat there? Yeah. Yep, that was exactly because I wanted to imitate Luffy sitting on top of the flying lamp like I'd seen in the anime. Told you, OG One Piece fan. Number two, the whole idea of brotherhood in One Piece. I have a little brother, Tess. That's not his actual name, but I nicknamed him Tess because his dancing style is like the Tasmanian Devil from Looney Tunes. And even though we're seven years apart and don't even share the same mother, we're as close as you can be. <laughs> Seriously, we shared a room for like 15 years. We did everything together. We started breaking together. <laughs> We talk anime together, we eat together, we see each other almost daily. Even though I've been studying and living at my own place for five years already. Above everything else, that's the point where I can identify with Ace the most. As a caring big brother who'd invest all of his power, all of his capacities to ensure his little brother's safety, growth, and well-being. Like, who wants to see his brother up there? 
no matter what it is that he does. Point number three. I know how it feels to be in a real family that is not related by blood. So my father married again to an Algerian woman when I was two years old. Ever since, this woman who I nicknamed Tata taught me everything, taught me to be a good person and I owe her everything. Like, I would have been lost without her. I know that. Danke Tata für alles. And even her family over in Algeria from the get-go accepted me as a real family member, even though we know nothing alike. <laughs> Off to the last point. I got a pirate crew in real life. In real life. <laughs> See, breaking is not just a hobby of mine. It's my passion and a way of life. And I've always loved to compare the breaking journey to One Piece in general. Why? Well, because just like in One Piece, breaking crews are founded on the base of true friendship. They share the same values, they have a crew code, and if there are discrepancies, they don't just let go of each other. I'm talking these Luffy, Usopp kind of situations. You go through that. It's part of the process, but it's worth it. I learned that. We even have a Jolly Watcher. See this back print? That's a Jolly Watcher. And all my pride. Anyways, <laughs> together we travel the world to compete against crews with big names <laughs> Trying to make a name for ourselves, put our name on the map so to speak And everybody compliments each other, just like the Straw Hats You see what I mean? Coming to an end here, let me just explain to you what One Piece really means to me I could be going on for hours talking about how great this once in a lifetime story really is But let me boil it down to this To me, One Piece is essentially a story about dreams and friendship But it's also a story about systematic injustice, racism, exploitation, corruption and genocide I won't make it any smaller than it is One Piece is about life And it reminds us to love Well, as you can tell one Piece and anime in general holds a very dear place in my heart. And I'm sure many of you, well, at least those who've reached this point of the video, feel the same way. My childhood wasn't necessarily always like super happy-go-lucky. Looking back at it, I may have been sad more often than I should have been, but it were these stories that showed me to keep that little spark of belief in your heart to shoot for your aims and to keep going and that it's worth it. That it's okay to cry and lay on the ground for some time, but then get up again because it's worth it. You know how happy it makes me to know that anime is becoming so popular nowadays and that so many children like new generation are watching and growing up with anime? Just recently it made me smile from my soul I saw a 10 year old girl holding a Naruto manga in her hands and I just knew because I was the same age when I discovered it how much of an impact this could have on her seriously this thing means so much to me and that's why it's always been my dream to somehow contribute to this these stories and indeed I've partly already been able to fulfill that dream by voice acting the first slam dunk yeah drei punkte the German version but this thing the One Piece live action series. To me, <laughs> this is larger than life. The One Piece live action series managed to do that one thing that I've been trying to do for over 18 years, which is making people understand what we are about. That these are deep, inspirational stories full of love and passion. Through this Netflix production, so many people have gotten access to One Piece and fell in love with it. Why? Because the directors, the producers, the actors, the cinematography, the stage production, everybody was going at this with full love. And you feel that. And I thank everybody who's involved in this project for giving their everything to have made this production become what it is. Like, I'm not playing. I hate sitting in front of the TV for longer than two hours. I can't, I cannot stand it. I've never done it. Like my maximum was three hours. But on that very day, the One Piece series was dropping. I sat on my sofa watching the entire series for those eight hours. And I was screaming at that freaking TV. Because it made me feel so alive, man. It was on One Piece, but it felt like you could touch it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Again, I could be talking about this for hours. And that's what I just want to say. Thank you. You made people connect through and because of One Piece. And now even more people will spread their love.
and even more people will continue laughing. And I want to be part of this. I want to help people keep laughing and to tell the story, bringing my character to it. That's why. That's why playing Porkis the Ace for the Netflix One Piece Life adaptation would be a life task for me. <laughs> and just in case, <laughs> I mean, you never know, Oda Sama gets to see this. I want to say, Oda Sama. One piece of Sakkuzen, Shitte Kurasatte. Now, that was everything I wanted to say. Thank you.